Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We have another unbooking to do today. Unbooking, you might ask? Well, it's not an unboxing. We're not unboxing a box. We're opening a book. Unbooking. Cool, so you might have seen my first video, which was The Hobbit Companion, uh, done by David Day. Well, I managed to find another book by David Day, and it is Tolkien, The Illustrated Encyclopedia. Let's crank it open, shall we? Now, one thing I did want to check was release dates, because, of course, like I said, they're both by the same author. So... This is, it says, text copyright illustrations copyright was 1997. First published in Great Britain in 1997. This one was first published in 1992. So this one here is older than The Hobbit Companion. And having been released in 1992, uh, I don't know if this is the one of the first published or not. If it is, oh, there was a reprint in 1996 as well. Uh, paperback edition, first published in 1993, reprinted in 2000. Uh, copyright and artwork by Octopus Publishing Group Limited. Uh, so, yeah, this book has some age to it, and it doesn't look too shabby. It's great. Okay, so, of course, we have our table of contents, which is always great. Uh, once again, from what I saw, the illustrations were quite nice in this. We've got the Battle of the Bridge of Khazadum. Life and works of J.R.R. R. Tolkien. So when he was born, when his mother died of diabetes, he was, um, that was 1904. Then of course, we've got when he released um, his books. His friendship with C.S. Lewis was 1926. Uh, when the war ended... The draft of the Lord of the Rings sent to publishers was 1947. 1948, the Lord of the Rings was completed. 1954, publication of the Lord of the Rings, Volume 1s and 2. In 1937, The Hobbit is published. Tolkien begins to write a sequel, which eventually becomes The Lord of the Rings. Alright, let's crank right into it. A chronology of Middle-earth and the Undying Lands. Creation, Shaping of Arda, Ages of Darkness, Ages of Stars... Ages of Sun, Undying Land, Ages of Sun, Middle Earth, Ages of Lamps, Last Eldership Departs, Kingdom of Middle Earth and the Ages of the Sun, Creation of Arda, The Trees of the Valar. So we've got some real nice illustrations. I'm not reading through it, of course, because this is an unbooking, not an actual reads to YouTube. Second Age of the Sun, War of Sauron and the Elves, 1693. Numenorians defeat Sauron, 1700. Uh, and then we've got the Ring Wraiths appearing. Founding of Arnor and Gondor, Sauron returns to Mordor. The Last Alliance of Elves and Men formed. Battle of Dagoland and Siege of Dark Tower. And of course, the One Ring cut from Sauron's hand. Sauron and Ring Wraiths banished to shadow. This here is an illustration of the downfall of Numenor. History of the Rings of Power. If you're going to do some studying about Tolkien and his books, this book and the other one that I showed you guys from David Day are probably going to be your best bets. There's a lot of really good uh, juicy information in this. That kind of makes it, you know, into context, I suppose. And that kind of gives you an idea. Middle Earth and sailing off to the Undying Lands. And of course, in Lord of the Rings... Our hobbits went from Hobbiton, all the way down to Mordor. And the hobbit, Bilbo Baggins, went from Hobbiton to the Lonely Mountain. Oh, it's actually done in alphabetical order. So if you're trying to look up something, let's say Samwise Gamgee, you'd look under S. Legolas, you'd look under L. Treebeard, you'd look under T. Mordor, you'd look under M, so on and so forth. So it's kind of like a Middle Earth dictionary, I suppose. The Argonoth, the Gates of Gondor, literally the Royal Stones, but also called the Gates of the Kings or the Gates of Gondor, the Argonoth was a pair of massive carvings cut into the high cliffs on either side of a gorge that fed into a lake above the great falls of Raros on the Anjuan River. Big end, of course. It's the 
Barrow Downs. A lot of the information that'll be in here wouldn't have made it to the movie because the movie can't, of course, or the trilogy can't, of course, have every single little thing in the movie. So a lot of the stuff that's mentioned in the books uh, didn't make it to the movie, but will be inside here for clarification, more understanding, research purposes. The Refuge of Dunharrow. Erebor, the Lonely Mountain. Fangorn Forest. Hidden Kingdom of Gondolin. Got the Grey Havens. Melkor and Ungoliant crossing Hell Corrects. Until the end of the Second Age of Sun and the Change of the World, there was a northern narrow gap of sea and ice between the Undying Lands and Middle Earth. This was called Halkarangs, the Grinding Ice. It was over this bridge of ice that Melkor and Ungoliant the Great Spider fled after they destroyed the trees of the Valar and stole, stole the Samorals. I believe it's Ungoliant that's the largest spider in Middle-earth. The Ent attack on Isengard. Such an epic scene in uh, the Two Towers. Iron Hills, that's where Dane was from. Uh, if you've seen The Hobbit, you'll remember Dane. He's the one that rides in on a wild boar. And he's played by, his name always, Billy Connolly. That's the one. West Door of Khazadam. <laughs> Goldenwood of Lothlorien. <laughs> Golden Hall of Metasold, of course. That's home to King Theoden. Now, if you don't remember the name, if you've seen the movies in The Two Towers... They go and visit a king. This king is looking very old and fragile and under the unwise, I suppose, assistance of Grima Wormtongue. Where Theoden is inside, that is the Golden Hall of Metasold. Minas Morgul used to be a nice place until uh, Mordor kind of took that over. Near 2002 of the Third Age, a fortress city of Minas Ithil, the Tower of the Moon, was captured after a two-year siege by the forces of the Nazgul Witch King and renamed Minas Morgul, the Tower of the Wraiths. It was also called the Tower of Sorcery and the Dead City. Similar in structure to its great rival, Minas Tirith, it became a haunted and evil place that shone in the night with a ghostly light. Mirkwood. Of course, that is home to A, Radagast, and B, some more giant spiders. The Dark Tower of Mordor. The Island Kingdom of Numenor. The Battle of Pelennir Fields, the last and major battle in Return of the King, the third Peter Jackson Lord of the Rings movie. The Roros Falls, that's where Boromir goes down when he's been slain. He's in the boat and he's going along the river and then phew, down into the waterfall. That is the fall of Roros. Rivendell, we know Rivendell because, of course, that's where Legolas and Arond and Arwen and the Fellowship get formed and all that kind of stuff. The Hobbit lands of Shire. Some of these places I'm not too familiar with. And that's because I haven't studied the books. I have studied the movies. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know everything, of course. Sociology. This is a complete guide to all the peoples of Middle-earth and the Undying Lands. It includes all the racial, national, and tribal categories of men, elves, dwarves, hobbits, ents, Maya, and Valar, with which Tolkien populated his world. And, of course, it's talking about the first initial peoples. Black Numenorians. Corsairs of Umba. We see that in the Battle of Palinir Fields in the third Lord of the Rings uh, movie, Return of the King. And it's also on one of the ships is where Peter Jackson has a cameo. Fun fact, he's the one that gets shot with an arrow. The Dead Men of Dunharrow. The Dwarves of Durin's Line. Obviously we explore that a lot more in the Hobbit trilogy. It's an East Elf. Easterling tribesmen, elven warriors, hobbit children, Istari wizard, Nazgul. Fun fact: it is actually Peter's wife that uh, does the screeching for the Ring Wraith slash Nazgul in the Lord of the Rings movies. Orcs. 
But not to filthy oxes. We're here in Horseman. The snowmen of Thorashill. Must be in a, another book because I don't think I've seen or heard of them in uh, Lord of the Rings or The Hobbit. Snowmen. In the northern land of Thorashill in the third age of the sun, there lived a primitive people who were descendants of the ancient Farad Waif. In Sindarin, these were the Losoth. But in the common western tongue, they were called the snowmen of Farishal. So I think this part here is talking about the races. Because I haven't seen anything specifically about the characters. Uh, so this is a complete naturalist dictionary of all the flora and fauna of Middle-earth and the Undying Lands. I like how they've broken it down. It's pretty cool. We've got the Balrogs. Barrowwits, the bat. Cold Drakes, Winged Dragons, The March of the Ants. Of course, there'd be a lot about weed in this because, you know, the Hobbits and Gandalf and whatnot really enjoyed uh, smoking their pipe weed. Here we go, pipe weed. Before the days of the War of the Ring, the Hobbits were a quiet folk who could claim little influence on the world beyond the Shire. But of one thing, however, they did boast to be the makers and masters, and that was the smoking of the herb Nicotonia, which was named Galanos in Elvish. When originally brought from the land of Numenor by men, it was prized only for the scent of its flower. It was the hobbits of Bree who grew it specifically for the purpose of smoking it in long-stemmed pipes and renamed it to Pipeweed. They derived a great enjoyment from this pastime, and in the way of hobbits towards things of pleasure, smoking pipeweed was rated as a high art. The hobbits were also consumers of fine pipeweeds, rating those of Bree and South Farthing highest. Then Long Bottom Leaf, Old Toby, Southern Star, and South Lynch. This most famous hobbit habit spread over Middle Earth and was widely practiced by men and dwarves. Spitters, cave troll, vampires. The hell? Vampires in Middle Earth. Whether it's from bird or beast that Melkor bred the evil blood sucking bat of Middle Earth, no tell tales. But in the first age of the sun, it is told how, in this winged form, made large and armed with talons of steel, Vampire spirits came into the service of Melkor, the Dark Enemy. There you go, guys. There were vampires in Middle Earth. No idea of that. And a werewolf. What? Biography. Now we've got an illustrated who's who of Middle Earth. So this is where we're going to find Bilbo, uh, Balin, uh, Radagast, and all those. Aragorn the second. Azog. He looks really freaking hilarious there than what he does, of course, in the movie. A Beyond, the skin changes. A lovable Bilbo Baggins of the Shire. Wolf of Agabound. The Red Moor was greatest wolf of all time. This is this one here. Guardian of the Gates of Angband, who never slept. He was reared on living flesh by Morgoth during the first age of the sun. We've got Dane, of course. We've got Dwalin, played by Graham McTavish in the Hobbit trilogy. We've got Aramir, played by Cal Urban in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Eowyn, played by Miranda Otto. Frodo, well, we all know who he was played by. Gandalf, played by Sir Ian McKellen. Gollum, voiced and motion captured by Andy Serkis. Gothmog, the Balrog, which of course Gandalf fights. Melkor, or Mogoroth, the enemy. Dun dun dun. Mariarog of Brandybuck, played by, of course, Dominic Monaghan. And Peregrine Took, played by Billy Boyd. Sauron the Dark Lord. Shelob the Great Spider. <laughs> Smaug the Golden. 
have King Theoden play Bernard Hill. Tom Bombadil, who sadly wasn't in the movies, would have been great if he was, but you got to keep the movie going, I suppose. Treebeard, voiced by John Reese davies who of course played Gimli the Dwarf. The Dog Outside Barking, played by, of course, The Dog Outside Barking. Grimmer Wormtongue, played by Braid Dorif, Witch King of Mughal. And there we go. Got a whole bunch of table of contents. So, if you're planning on researching The Lord of the Rings or The Hobbit or any works by Tolkien, I can recommend this book. Of course, this book. Okay. Both of these, hand in hand, probably help you out for any research that you've got. But that there, guys, was an unbooking of Tolkien, the illustrated encyclopedia by David Day. Uh, and what a phenomenal book it is. Uh, yeah, a lot of maps, genealogies, time charts, illustrations. Uh, it goes into detail about certain characters and locations and all that kind of stuff. It's definitely a book worth having, especially if you're a fan. Um, if you don't care for the books, then maybe not. Um, I'm not much of a reader, but I do appreciate the books. And as a Tolkien collector, I collect the stuff from movies and the stuff from books. So there you go. So if you enjoyed that, guys, and you want to see another unbooking or even an unboxing, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell for all notifications. I've been Pop Daddy, and I will see you guys hopefully on the next video.